historically, these this kind of imagery has been called false color imaging. Be- I, because essentially you're creating color where there was none? Is that what the Well, see, that's is? the problem. That's what it sounds like. You, yeah. It sounds like you're creating color where there was none. I mean, when you think, you know, you know, false testimony, you think something is a lie, right? Right, You, right. you know, a false witness, someone isn't really saying the right thing. You know, uh, uh, false is a bad word because it's loaded with this idea that there's something... Uh, that you're conspiracy, right. a conspiracy <laughs> right, to, to right. hide what's about, going on, right? Talk about pejorative. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it was the term was innocuously created to try to set apart the idea. Again, in the in the 70s when this term first surfaced, all we did was the way we made color images is just make red, green, and blue is red, green, and blue. We put photographic film in a telescope and we got a color image out. Oh. And there was this need when we first started pushing into different parts of the spectrum or processing it differently to make sure people didn't think this was the actual red, green, blue color of something. So the term false color came up to say as a little warning, oh, this is actually a different way of Just looking at something. Just to be aware of right. it. Right. Now, of course, all of astronomy is false color today. I mean, there's almost no astronomy ever done in red, green, blue. Okay. Even the stuff that's done in visible light usually uses very narrow little filters around certain certain uh, features that say hydrogen gas puts out or, or silicon or, or carbon. And then we recombine it in a way that would not be the color your eye would see anyway. Okay. So to call the entire field of astronomical visualization false color, it, it you know, just we don't... It seems like a punch in the throat for it, no it, reason. It does. And, and everybody, all my, colleagues, to, yeah. all my colleagues who did the same thing for Hubble and for the Chandra X-ray Observatory, <laughs> for, for European... So, like We've all... We get together every occasionally for meetings and trade you know right. secrets and tips and tricks. And, and we all hate false color and we're trying to we're lobbying to get people to really just describe it for what it is instead of saying it's a false color image say it's it's a it's an infrared color image or a yeah. representation of infrared data yeah a uh, term i particularly like is translated color it's oh you know, i like translated yeah. color i mean if i if i show that's you exactly what you're doing well exactly you know if i show you a copy of the art of war in the original chinese it means nothing to you but if i show it to you in english right you're like oh okay that's in English. It's, I, it's a translation. It's not a false copy right. of the book. <laughs> right. It's a translation. Right. It's a, yeah, you're, you are now able to comprehend the book that was in Chinese. Exactly. And yeah. so that's exactly what we're doing with color. We're, we're, we're translating it from a different part of the spectrum. It's real color. Yeah. It's really there. If your eye actually worked in that spectrum, you would be able to see that variation. Right. But it's been translated into something that you can see. Right. It's Yeah. And now you can see it and now you can understand the science and you can understand the math and you can and and, 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 and appreciate have an the beauty and okay. appreciate the beauty of it. That is one of the. I mean, is there a website where a lot of your images, like if people wanted to scroll through some of the images that you've worked with? Yes, actually, in fact, there's been a, a really intriguing project that uh, again, the kind of the visualization community I'm involved with has yeah. been um, uh, working on for many years. Uh, we actually have a website that's kind of in a beta form now called Astropix. Um, Astropix. Astropix.ipac.caltech.edu. I, uh, uh, I will link that. A link and, it, uh, yes. It, Astro, is it P-I-C-S? P-I-X. P-I-X, Astropix. Right. Dot com. And what we've done on this site is a lot of the key observatories right now, uh, the Spitzer, uh, Hubble, Chandra, the European Southern Observatory, we have all been taking our imagery, the ones that we've we've really prettied up, released, we've translated into uh, really nice, clean, public-friendly images. Okay. It has all this extra information, uh, wavelengths and which telescopes went to which colors and, and exactly what part of the sky it's seeing. in, all this. Yeah. We've folded this into a, uh, a metadata format. Ooh, metadata, that's a... Ooh. Yeah, yeah, well, it, does, it's, it sounds you important. You play with. And we, we, we basically embed the descriptive information in the image. Okay. And then they all feed... Their, their assets into one location. And so we now have this new Astropix website that aggregates all of the imagery that's, all the public imagery, imagery that's been released oh. from these different telescopes into one site so you can find it all without having to go and search like, you like know. Like what did Hubble see when it landed right. itself at that point, part of the sky? Exactly. Okay. So we've got now uh, close to 4,000 images there from, you know, wow. over a dozen telescopes.